The Bay of Bengal Basin, just east of Indonesia, is now at the North Pole. The Pacific Ocean, just west of Peru, is the South Pole. Greenland and Antarctica, now rotating equatorially in the torrid zone, find their ice caps dissolving madly in the tropical heat. Massive walls of water and ice surge towards the ocean, taking everything from mountains to plains in gushing, heaving paths, creating immense seasonal moraines, and in less than 25 years the ice caps are gone, and the oceans around the world rise over 200 feet with the newfound water. The torrid zone will be shrouded in a fog for generations from the enormous amounts of moisture poured into the atmosphere by the melting ice caps. The new ice caps begin to form in new polar areas. Greenland and Antarctica emerge with verdant tropical foliage. Australia is the new, unexplored continent in the North Temperate Zone, with only a few handful of survivors populating its vastness. New York lies at the bottom of the Atlantic, shattered, melted by earth fire, and covered by unbelievable amounts of mud. Of San Francisco and Los Angeles, not a trace is left. Egypt emerges from its Mediterranean inundation new and higher. Still the land of ages, the commonplace of our time becomes the mysterious Baalbek of a new era. A new era. Yes, the cataclysm has done its work well. The greatest population regulator of all does once more for man what he refuses to do for himself, and drives the pitiful few who survive into a new stone age. Once more, the earth has shifted its 60-mile thick shell, with the poles moving almost to the equator in a fraction of a day. Again, the atmosphere and oceans, refusing to change direction with the earth's shell, have wiped out almost all life. After this tumble, we'll join Noah, Adam and Eve, Atlantis, Mu, and Olympus, and Jesus joins Osiris, Zeus, and Vishnu. So, what did we just read, and why are we hearing about it on this channel? Seems very odd and sensational, but to understand this recently declassified version of Earth's cyclical catastrophism, let's begin with the most well-known version of it. Professor Charles Hapgood promulgated the Earth's crust displacement theory in 1958. That work was supported by Einstein, for which he wrote a foreword. In Hapgood's version, the Earth's polar wander accelerated from the normal 1 degree every million years to taking a 40 degree tilt every 5,000 years or so. This ended up being part of the reason it was not accepted. The science from the rock of Earth has told a very different story. The book classified eight years after Hapgood's, called The Adam and Eve Story, you heard chapter one to begin this video, is indeed describing a similar one-day shift of the geographic poles due to the destabilization of the asthenosphere boundary of mantle and crust by magnetic reversal or destabilization behavior of the core of Earth which could reduce the friction of the mantle and allow that low-velocity zone to become a free fluid flowing zone. In the classified 1966 version, the polar ice caps drag themselves to the equator. This is similar to the publicized work of Hapgood in 1958, with the exception of it being a full 90 degree tilt in the classified work that doesn't go randomly each cycle, but which tilts, then tilts right back in the next cycle. Hapgood did not have that in his model. Their explanation is intriguing, and again so is Velikovsky's of planetary orbital changes, just as the more recent work of David Talbot and the older works of Sitchin. Each is trying to explain the cyclical catastrophe that used to be so well understood that its existence was not what consumed their questions, but why did it keep happening? Even Einstein did get caught up in the mix, but had to rely on Hapgood's and others' knowledge of geology and mineralogy. One can find many references to these names, and ones like Hugh Brown, who said the ice caps were the culprit back in 1948, and the earliest recognized mentions of the cyclical catastrophe, they say, are the 1870s. That is, of course, unless you go by the work of the classified report, which extends the timeline nearly 100 years back to 1779. So one is forced to ask, why was this one classified? The concept of cyclical catastrophe was not new. The ties to myth and religion were made by Velikovsky and others. The ice cap drag being the physical manifestation was true in Brown and Hapgood's works, so what's the difference? It was the 90 degree flip back and forth each cycle. That is the key difference. But is that a reason for classification? Well. It is true that not creating panic in the public has been and continues to be a reason for secrecy and classification, and to create panic 
Something like this would have to be proven scientifically. Now hold that thought. So maybe you didn't know this about Professor Hapgood. He worked for the CIA immediately before becoming a professor and leading into this catastrophism thing. He in fact worked for them as Brown proffered the catastrophe idea in the 40s. So why is it so important that we focus on the timeline and severity and pattern motion back and forth to the same places within the declassified document? It became almost immediately clear upon thorough review that Hapgood's version wouldn't work. Even Einstein ended up telling him so years later, arguing that ice cap weight alone would not be enough. There had to be something more. But the real damning evidence was coming in the form of time average pole position over millions of years. The rock was showing them evidence of polar wander being much slower, with their locations not having changed much in millions of years, essentially throwing out the concept that every five or six thousand years there was a random 40 degree tilt. That is what utterly destroyed Hapgood's hypothesis, but it does not destroy the ping pong back and forth hypothesis, especially because over millions of years there will be evidence of the pole in nearly that same position over major amounts of time. Unfortunately, the scientists didn't know about the classified work, so it was not something they ever looked for. In terms of time average pole position, think about this. The poles could flip back and forth one day every year, and over millions of years, you would have evidence of the pole in that exact same position, and might be tricked into thinking it has never moved at all. This was the case in 1985 when a highly cited article was published by a master's student at Columbia University, saying the poles were only averaging one degree movement per million years. Columbia, by the way, is where CIA recruitment has been strongest and runs deep at the Ivy League, where the CIA funneled money through the National Science Foundation, and yes, that movie, 2012, depicting the rapid pole shift in a day, was about the classified work's timeline and severity, not Hapgood's as was said in the movie, but what can you expect from Columbia Pictures? But let's get back to the science, because this was also the case with notable works using the same time average flaws up through history to now. One of the nails in the coffin came in 2002, in the work now cited over 500 times and looked to as the death of Earth's crust displacement theory. Except the correction has only been cited about 50 times, and in terms of the latitude and longitude positions of the poles, the correction has some of these values changing so wildly from the initial publication as to include the opposite side of the world, the highest possible error in this type of analysis. All work crushing the theory utilizes these flawed studies, especially the long-term average pole position, and none address the problem of a ping-pong shift where you would have that time average pole position appearing to be in the same area over millions of years. Much of our understanding is based on assumptions, and the further into the past and deeper into the rock we go, the less well tested those assumptions are. As it was so eloquently put in the classified work, Many attempts have been made to answer the charge made to the geological profession to explain these sudden revolutions. Every time the cataclysmic concept has come to life, the beast has been stoned, burned at the stake, beaten to a pulp, and buried with a vengeance. But the corpse simply won't stay dead. Each time, it raises the lid of its coffin and says in its sepulchral tones, You will die before I. Truly. The entirety of the absence of this reality from our modern lexicon is function of good science debunking a slightly misguided version of an idea. That's not to say the classified version we are beginning to share here is verified. It's simply not the Earth's crust displacement theory you find online. It has never been tested or debunked, and none of the studies showing long-term average motion can account for these types of shifts back to the same places time after time. What a coincidence that the one theory that could break these debunkings was the one that got classified. What you actually saw in the movie 2012 was what the CIA classified, among all the things that could have been classified during that time that are seemingly so similar, but for that specific pattern in the cycle. This was a well-accepted aspect of ancient civilization, and it is very hard for my scientific preferences to look at the corroborating stories with the characters and events so similar from China and India to the Americas and believe that they made it all up. 
wouldn't such a thing consume the people if widely proven to